In this video, I want to highlight two different approaches towards development in Node-RED. Single instance versus multi-instance. So in this left panel here, you can see I have an instance of Node-RED running on Air Metal. This is probably how most people have it set up. And it's running on a device on a server. And I have multiple tabs here doing multiple different things. So in this tab here, I've got home automation running. In this tab here, I have a PLC simulator. This tab here, I've got this really complicated flow that's doing some battery diagnostics. And there's just so much going on in it that I actually have it disabled just so that it doesn't use so much resources. Here, I've got an OPC server, and here I've got an OPC client. Now, these different tabs here are doing different applications that really don't have anything to do with each other. So really, a more sensible approach is to separate each of these tabs that are different applications and have no relation with each other into their own separate Node-RED instance. That way, I can manipulate each of these applications individually as necessary and enable or disable them as I see fit, rather than through the tabs. It also creates a sandbox for each application so they don't potentially clash with each other. And you only have to install the custom nodes you need for each application, which are all good practices if you're wanting to use these applications in production. So ultimately, a multi-instance application approach turns Node-RED into a more scalable and enterprise-ready development platform. So I've got my FlowForge account set up here on the right. I'm going to go ahead and log in. OK, I'm in. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and create a new application. Go ahead and call this application Home Automation. And that is to line up with this tab here. All right, now you can see my instance is running with the application Home Automation. So let's go ahead and pop into the editor. All right, I'm in the editor. It's treating it like a brand new installation, which is what we would expect. Now, the other advantage here with FlowForge is, is that I'm actually running this version of FlowForge locally in Docker. So this is a local installation, and yet it has an externally available address right here that I can access you know, remotely from outside of my house. It's also secured with SSL, so I've got a valid SSL security certificate. So that's great. All right, now let's go ahead and take this home automation flow and export it. To highlight here is, is that I have an exact copy node for node running in FlowForge that I do on my local server. So that's great. And it's running in its own sandbox. Cool. So now we've replicated our home automation application. Let's go ahead and move on to the PLC sim. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new instance. Actually, I create, create an application here. And we'll call this PLC sim. And we'll give it the same instance name as what's already defined here, create the application. And again, let's wait for it to start. So once again, I've got a copy of this PLC sim without the custom nodes, but that's fine. This is actually a good thing because as I mentioned earlier, you wanna be able to have your custom nodes for each application and not have them clash with each other, right? So if I installed all the custom nodes for PLC sim plus the home automation one, then you start creating a fairly bloated application, right? But right now I've got a separate Node-RED instance and it's just gonna have the custom nodes that are required for PLC sim. And if I go to my instance of home automation and open that editor, I'm just going to have the required nodes for this application. So again, it, it creates a sandbox for each application. Now, the other good thing is also, if I need to suspend this instance for, for some reason, right? I just don't need it anymore, or I want to just take it, take it offline right now, I'll go ahead and suspend it. And it, it's suspended. So now it's no longer running at the moment, it's no longer taking resources, and I can go ahead and restart it whenever I need to. Just like a virtual machine, essentially. And I can go to my instances list and do the same thing with the PLC sim. Start it, stop it, restart it, suspend it. So let's say I install a new update and it requires to be restarted, I can just go ahead and restart it, and it's not going to affect the other home automation instance in any way. It's completely sandboxed from the other one. So you can see how effective this is for production applications because you have each application running in its own separate instance and one is not affecting the other and they each have their own application use case. Ooh.